One of the best ways to tune your AR to run different types of ammo or to run it with and without a suppressor is with an adjustable gas block. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. It's new, weekly updates from Ultimate Reloader. We're talking about free resources, exclusives, hot deals, and more. Three ways to subscribe. Click on the button on the website. Go to ultimatereloader.com slash subscribe or click on the QR code. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. On the channel, you've seen this eight and a half inch 300 blackout CMMG Banshee multiple times. This is a really fun compact rifle, but it does have its limitations. With an eight and a half inch barrel and running 300 blackout, uh, some tuning is necessary. Tuning to transition from a 150 grain bullet that's supersonic over to a 220 grain bullet that's subsonic. Uh, if we were to take the suppressor off or even sometimes running a different suppressor, tuning is the answer. Now, if you're familiar with the way an AR is put together, there's a gas port. The gas port is drilled to a certain diameter. The gas block takes the gas pressure and takes a 90 degree turn, pushes on the bolt carrier group, pushes it back, cycles the action. So if you have different gas port diameters, that's one way that you can tune your AR, but that would either require drilling it out or getting a different barrel. A gas block also can be adjustable. What I've got here is the Quantum Gas Block from Alterdyne. This provides a very easy way, I'm gonna get this open to show you what's included here. We've got an extended Allen key, and then we've got the printed materials, which includes some instructions here. We've got the gas block itself. This particular model is made for barrels with a three quarter inch gas port machined surface, which is gonna work with this CMMG. This is where the magic happens. We've got this screw here, and as we open it up, we can feel clicks, just like that. It's about a quarter revolution. And based on the number of clicks, we can keep track of different settings that will allow us to tune for different bullet weights, different charge weights, uh, different suppressors, or if we're gonna take the suppressor off completely and run a brake or a flash hider or a bare muzzle. So this is a really easy upgrade, but it's gonna provide a lot of flexibility for your rifle. I'm gonna take a moment and put this on. You gotta love this Aero Products Rock Vice. This makes it really easy to secure an AR or a rifle with a pick rail or an Arca rail. Very, very solid. And of course we can put this exactly how we want it. Okay, so I'm not gonna walk you through in real time, but basically we're gonna loosen two set screws. We're gonna take off the gas block, pound out the pin that secures it to the gas tube, transfer the tube to the Ultradyne gas block, and then insert it back through the upper receiver through the hole and uh, we should be good to go. So in order to capture exactly what was going on with the AR, as we tuned the quantum adjustable gas block, we utilized the Ultimate Reloader recoil rig. And at the heart of the recoil rig, we've just upgraded to this Duasoft Sirius 8 channel high data rate data acquisition module. This can ha sample at up to 200,000 samples per second. We can run eight channels, and one of the channels was our PCB piezo electronics load cell. This gives us rearward forces I think we we're sampling at 50,000 samples per second for this particular testing. And it's really interesting to take a look at AR dynamics with recoil because basically you have two recoil impulses. You have the first impulse while the bullet is traveling down the barrel and any muzzle interactions are happening with the suppressor or the brake or the bare muzzle. And then you have an extended period of time as the bolt carrier group is going back. And you can actually see as the bolt carrier 
group slams with the buffer at its rearmost position. And that gives you a secondary recoil impulse. So kind of my thought process was to look at that secondary recoil impulse to tune the gas block until we could see that come down to a certain level, but still have reliable functioning of the AR, which incorporates two different parameters. First is picking up rounds and cycling, and the second is the lockback uh, when the mag is empty. Okay, so that's the recoil rig. For the testing, we started with 220 grain subsonic ammo that we've loaded, and what we noticed was it was not a huge secondary recoil impulse. In fact, the first load that we tried wouldn't cycle at all, even with the gas block wide open. That's because this is an eight and a half inch barrel. So we upped to the powder charge, and even with the gas block fully open, it's fairly mild, that secondary recoil impulse. So to demonstrate that, we took our 175 grain supersonic load and compared it to the 220 grain subsonic load, specifically looking at the secondary recoil impulse. So here you can see a comparison of the two, and the biggest difference that I saw here was that secondary recoil impulse. So the higher peak that you see here is for that supersonic ammunition, and that lower peak is for the subsonic ammunition. Quite a difference. And so after seeing this initial set of results, I decided we would spend our time and our attention tuning the supersonic load because for this particular configuration with the AR, we're seeing pretty high secondary recoil impulse, kind of in the same order of magnitude as the primary recoil impulse. So for the supersonic 300 blackout testing, here was what I decided to do. I started with the quantum gas block all the way open, 20 clicks open. In other words, if you close it and you back it off 20 clicks, that's all the way open, that's 20 clicks. And what I did was I took a shot, recorded the recoil data, and then turned it two clicks in. In other words, closed it by two clicks. So we had 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4 total. And you can see all of the recoil data here superimposed. The individual shots are up at the top, and then kind of an overlay, oscilloscope style, of all of the shots together are down here in the larger graph. Specifically, if we look at shots six, seven, eight, and nine, we can see that secondary recoil, the bottoming out recoil impulse, the peak force is going down. But we can also see the total elapsed time between the primary recoil impulse and the secondary recoil impulse lengthening, which makes sense. You've got less force on something, it's gonna take a little bit longer to get all the way back and bounce off the back. In other words, that's the bottoming out there. So if we look at that data in raw tabular form, we can see what the peak forces were for the primary and the secondary for each of these last shots. So if we take six clicks open, we had 417 pounds for the secondary. For eight clicks open, it was 339. For six open, it was 189. And for four, it was 103. At four, the AR didn't cycle. The round fired and it did. the bolt carrier did not go far enough back to pick up the next round and chamber it. And then I noticed if I opened it to six, it would cycle. I shot a few shots to, to confirm, but for the last round, the bolt did not hold back. So when I went up to eight clicks open, I had both reliable cycling and the bolt catching uh, on the last round as the magazine was, was empty. So in the end, this process kind of confirmed instructions that you typically follow for tuning your adjustable gas block. Typically it's, you turn kind of the gas down until it doesn't function and then you go a certain number of clicks back up for kind of you know your factor of safety to make sure that you have a little bit of overhead in case you have a little bit less lube on your bolt or it's a bit colder and there's more friction and so on and so forth, right? But it's really interesting to be able to put numbers to this and definitely uh, helps when we're going from something like the 220 subsonic load, which has that very mild secondary uh, recoil impulse all the way up to the, you know, the supersonic ammunition, which was definitely had a lot more gas and was pushing the bolt back a lot more uh, kind of quickly. Now what we could do, what's really cool about this setup is I can actually see in here, right? And as I was doing the testing, I would just put this 330 seconds Allen key 
beside the silencer into the front of the gas block and make my click adjustments. And if we were moving between two different lots of ammo, two different loads, or even with a suppressor and without a suppressor, we could record the number of clicks that we need for optimum functioning for each of those and very quickly transition without the need to do a whole bunch of testing again and again each time we do that kind of switching. So the Ultradyne Quantum Gas Block, really great piece of gear. I think it's a really great upgrade to consider for your AR, especially if you're having any functioning problems or if you're transitioning between muzzle devices like a flash hider and a suppressor or a bare muzzle and a suppressor, it is really hard to optimize an AR for every particular scenario, every muzzle device and every type of ammo, especially when there's such a wide spectrum of different configurations. And that's why I chose to do 300 blackout for this particular test. So here's what I'd like to know from you. Are you running an adjustable gas block in your AR and do you adjust the settings? Why? Is it because you're transitioning between different types of muzzle devices, like running a suppressor and not running a suppressor? Is it because of differences in ammunition or some other reason? Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion down in the comments section. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone, up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting ultimate reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.